Federal government introduces direct purchase models to allow petrol marketers buy from local refineries. FG inaugurates a National Road Safety Advisory Council to reduce road crashes. This initiative will undoubtedly be of tremendous benefit to the motoring environment and the country at large. Empowering goals, empowering the future. Nigeria joins the world to push for recognition on the rights and challenges of the girl child. I have no regrets. In my next world, so I would still love to become a girl. You're welcome to Network News on NTA. I'm your anchor, Lami Ali. Joining me are Benny Adams with Business News Tonight and Ayo Deji Makinde has the latest in the world of sports. Now, Ayo, earlier this evening, Nigeria beat Libya one goal to nothing in the AFCON qualifier in Uyo. Is that a sign that Nigeria is going to participate in AFCON 2025? Oh yes, Lamy, that looks promising because Nigeria is just one more win away from getting automatic qualification as a second placed team in Group D to qualify for Afghan. Remember, we're still playing Libya in a few days' time. All right, we keep our fingers crossed. Now, the federal government has inaugurated the National Road Safety Advisory Council with a charge on members to align with global best practices in reducing road crashes. Vice President Kashim Shetima, as the inauguration, emphasized the critical nature of road safety, stating that road safety is not merely a matter of policy, but a critical part of the lifeline that connects the people of this nation. State House correspondent Abdurrahman Jibrila reports. <laughs> Consolidating a robust strategy to address the nation's road traffic challenges in its relatively short existence, the establishment of the National Road Safety Advisory Council aligns all the recommendations from the World Bank Country Capacity Review, which identified areas for improvement in Nigeria's road traffic administration and safety management. <laughs> And at this inauguration, Vice President Kashim Shatima urged the Federal Road Safety Corps to embrace these recommendations as a catalyst for the much-needed reforms in this sector, commending the seamless coordination between the federal and state executives, as well as various government agencies, saying the spirit of unity exemplifies the essence of working together for the common good. The inauguration of the members of this advisory council today it's not merely a call to refine operational strategies. It also highlights the urgent need to address the increasing number of road traffic crashes caused by not adherence to traffic regulations. More importantly, it reflects the readiness and cooperation of the esteemed members we are inaugurating today. This initiative will undoubtedly be of tremendous benefit to the motoring environment and the country at large. The co-marshal, Sheikh Mohammed, who is also the secretary of the advisory council, said the inauguration of the body opens a new vista in road safety management in Nigeria, fast-tracking the implementation of the Nigeria Road Safety Strategy, which is the country's response to the call for safe use of the road. Nigeria is expect more of uh, road traffic uh, crashes reduction, more of uh, intervention when crashes occur, more of uh, visibility of road safety men on the road, and more of engagement, advocacy, public education, socialization, and enlightenment of the general public on how to use the proper, proper use of the road. With this inauguration, we'll have a lot of funding, a lot of technology will be put in place in terms of traffic violation, and we of course, we expect much from the service. I must commend the president for the rapt attention to provide transport for our citizens. You know, transport is one of the most essential, essential variables that Nigerians need to watch. And most of our youths are on road. If the roads are safe by a road safety commission, I think it's going to be good for us. May God. The inauguration of the council underscores the commitment of the Tinibo administration in safeguarding the lives of citizens on the roads 
as the implementation provides a clear direction towards achieving the vision for road safety using the globally accepted safe system approach. From the State House, Abraham Jibrila, NTA News. State Governor Dr. Lowell has commended the efforts of the federal government and security agencies for the current successes recorded in the fight against insecurity in the state. The governor was speaking after an audience with Vice President Kashim Shetima at the presidential villa. The reality is that the insecurity in Zambra State has been there for the past 12 years. And as responsible government also, it is something we are tackling head on. We are doing the best that we can to make sure we secure lives and properties of our people. And it's an ongoing process and it will continue until we get to the end of this banditry issue in Zamfara and invariably Nigeria as a nation. Back, I'm sure you're aware that uh, within the last uh, one month, most of the major bandit leaders were neutralized. So that is significant progress and it's an ongoing process. We'll continue. The governor also briefed state house correspondents on efforts of the state government on educational development, especially promoting the rights of the girl child. We are at disadvantage in terms of girls' child education and that is why we are giving it the top priority. If you look at the uh, gifted uh, children that uh, I think about last month, you saw that Zamfara came second after Anambra, and majority of those were girls. That means also we're making significant progress in that area, and it will continue. Now, the organized labor has received a stock of new CNG buses to ameliorate the transportation challenge faced by Nigerian workers. Transport correspondent Ladibala reports that the Secretary General of the Trade Union Congress, Nuhutoro, took delivery of the buses from the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edung, as the Eagle Square in Abuja. This is a significant development in Nigeria's transportation sector. The federal government of Nigeria has received 60 compressed natural gas buses from Jet Systems Automobile as part of its effort to ease transportation challenges faced by Nigerians. So there's a pivot away from uh, fossil fuel, there's a, a, a particularly petrol and diesel towards uh, compressed natural gas, and even electric vehicles, which are cleaner, more climate friendly, and of course, much, much cheaper on the pocket. What word of assurance do you have for Nigerians that before December, we'll have most of this uh, refilling station across the country? You no, know, this initiative is just beginning. These are the early steps, and um, there is commitment to bringing in more CNG buses and more CNG kits so that people can convert. Economic experts note that government alone cannot drive the economy, hence the need to create an enabling environment for private sector involvement. For this to move forward, uh, it's a, it has to be a concerted effort between the private sector and the public sector. The last interaction we had with Mr. President, he promised to assist organized labor, Nigerian workers and their family with CNG buses, and this is part of it. We took delivery of the first batch. This is the second batch. We are excited about it. Nigerians await the benefit of CNG initiatives. In Abuja, Ladibala, NTA News. The federal government has introduced a new direct purchase model for petrol, allowing petroleum products marketers to buy directly from local refineries. Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edung, who confirmed this in a statement on Friday, says the move marks a significant shift from the previous arrangements where the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Company, rather, limited NNPCL was the sole purchaser and distributor of petrol. This direct purchasing mechanism allows marketers to negotiate commercial terms directly with the refineries, fostering a more competitive market environment and enabling a smoother supply chain for petroleum products. 
It was said with the commencement of local petrol production, the market is better equipped to support these direct transactions and is expected to enhance efficiency in product availability and also stabilize market conditions. The signing of Memorandum of Understanding for Gas Sales and Purchase Agreements between NNPC Limited and Joint Venture Partners is a critical step to utilizing and monetizing Nigeria's abundant gas resources. Minister of State Petroleum Resources Gas, Ekweri Ekpo, says this says this is in line with President Bola Tinubu's vision of fast-tracking Nigeria's journey towards a gas-driven economy. Lydia Sampson reports. Last year, opined that harnessing Nigeria's abundant natural gas resources for rapid industrialization, economic growth, and development is sacrosanct. And I urge all parties to continue in the same steadfastness that has enabled us to surmount all previous hurdles. After a decade long journey, pen has been put to paper, sealing the agreement that will supply 270 million standard cubic feet of gas per day, the largest single gas sale protest agreement to any domestic industry in Nigeria. Who have collectively invested in this project. We believe this will significantly advance Nigeria's gas infrastructure to the next level. We actually signed or agreed to a GSPA, but that was not executed. But today, parties to this agreement have aligned and are here today ready to execute this very pivotal agreement for the betterment of the brass fertilizer company. It is expected that the partners will commence actual construction of the project of national importance projected to bring in much needed foreign direct investment and create thousands of jobs while also changing the face and fortunes of the whole state and community for good. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Now, the federal government promises proactive action to stem the increase in cases of out-of-school children across Nigeria to reduce poverty and insecurity. The executive chairman of the National Commission for Almajiri and Out-of-School Children in Nigeria, Mohamed Sani Idris, gave the assurance in Abiyokuta when he visited Ogun State Governor Dapwa Abiyodun in company of some members of the House of Representatives. Hakim Jimo brings us the details. The executive members of the National Commission for Almajiri and Out-of-School Children are in Ogun State to governize support from the state governor, Dapo Abiodun, who is also the chairman of the Southern Governors Forum. They want governors of the Southern States to expedite action in minimizing the menace. It is our collective interest in, in agreement with His Excellency that we have to come all out to work together, that unless we get the support from various states, we are not going to succeed. From the National Assembly, with the sponsorship of the bill from one of us here, Dr. Kakele, after due diligence, the bill was passed and assented, and now we have a brand new commission. Governor Abiodun promised to support the commission to realize its mandate, assuring that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is committed to improving the welfare of the people. Identify um, immediate actionable steps that are visible, that are also measurable. Projecting forward, if we're able to do X, Y, Z, we hope to achieve this level of results as well that will translate to the reduction in the percentage of these children who are out of school. Established on the 27th of May 2023, the National Commission for Almajiri and Out of School Children was set up to provide an inclusive and multimodal education system for the overall development of the country. In Abelkuta, Akim Jimo, NTN News. Every girl child should be able to dream of a future where she can grow without limits. Nigeria's First Lady Uluremi Tinubu stated this in a message 
to celebrate this year's International Day of the Girl Child. She notes that the theme of the celebration, girls' vision for the future, is very apt and calls for more investment in education, starting from the home where girls would be taught to believe in themselves and the values of self-worth and dignity, as well as equipping them with the confidence to face the future. The First Lady says, with the right support, resources and opportunities, the potential of the world's more than 1.1 billion girls will know no bounds. She says Nigeria has come a long way in ensuring the education of the girl child. The First Lady, however, laments that too many girls are still denied their rights, restricting their choices and limiting their future. She saluted the girl child in Nigeria, urging them to be strong confident and determined in their resolve to push for the limitless opportunities that abound. You're watching Network News. Time now to take a break. We shall be back with more reports. Do stay Nigeria today joins countries across the globe to celebrate the International Day of the Girl Child. The theme for this year is Empowering Girls, Empowering the Future. Now, what does that imply? Momso Dimendati seeks answers. There she sits, Khadija, on a very busy road in a suburb of Abuja with a number of her friends all about the same age, idling away and begging for arms just to eat and stay alive. Year in, year out, from dawn to dusk. As a girl, you will have a very different life depending on where you happen to be born. If only she knew any better, if only the opportunity was available, and her parents and authorities concerned realized the crucial roles that lay ahead of her as a potential career woman, game changer, and mother, who will eventually bear, raise, and train future presidents, governors, and leaders to sustain the future of Nigeria. The situation is quite different for these young girls who are privileged to be groomed and start preparing for their future roles at a young age. I have no regrets. In my next world, so I would still love to become a girl. Make my family proud, make people around me proud. My expectation as a girl child is to stop molestation of females, domestic violence, rape, and gender inequality. Some parents don't have financial capacity to sponsor their children, so government should give free sponsorship and that captures the essence of the international day of the girl child so that the likes of khadija and her peers can have a brighter and most impactful future like ngozi okonja iwela amina mohammed ladikwali of blessed memory and others every girl has the potential to change the world build new cultural virtues that we promote you the get child when we equip girls with tools for success, we see nations grow stronger and futures grow brighter. As Nigeria commemorates this day, it will be pertinent for key players to act with the theme in mind, empowering girls, empowering the future. Momso Damien Ati, NT News. The International Day of the Girl Child, marked every October 11th, provides a global platform to reflect on the present issues facing girls today, recognize their rights and address the unique challenges they encounter. This year's theme, um, now, this year's theme calls attention to the hopes, dreams and aspirations of young girls everywhere. Ian Ray John has the story. <laughs> They stand tall, young, vibrant, and full of life. But beneath their smiles, they carry fears and face obstacles many cannot see. Imagine myself being a co-wife of somebody as old as my mom. is actually a problem that we're facing in Nigeria today. The welfare of my and the security and safety of other girls in this country. Some girls out there hiking. Some want to go to school, but it's just that due to some conditions, they don't. To bring these challenges to the forefront and promote girls' empowerment, the United Nations General Assembly on December 19, 2011, officially declared October 11 as the International Day of the Girl Child. In Abuja, the Oreva Girl Child Initiative 
brought young girls, educators, and community leaders together at the American Spaces to inspire and ignite the vision of future female leaders. We get to focus on creating an environment where those dreams can thrive and succeed, where girls have the tools, the resources, and the support they need to shape their own futures. Some people might want to tell you, you are dull, you are too short, you're too fat, you're too whatever. But I want you to tell yourself and anyone you come in contact with is that you're a graceful person. The event was a melting pot of ideas where girls were encouraged to dream boldly and claim their space in society. A girl is a nation. When you empower a girl, a nation or a community is empowered in totality. As Nigeria joins the global celebration, one thing is certain. With the right support, resources and opportunities, the potential of the world's 1.1 billion girls is limitless. These girls are not just dreaming. They are shaping the future, one step at a time. In Abuja, Henry John, NTA News. The Indian government has reaffirmed its commitment to deepening partnership with Nigeria, focusing on fostering stronger professional, economic and cultural ties. This came through the High Commissioner to Nigeria, Shri Bala Subramanian, during a visit to a hospital in Kanu, a facility born out of a technical collaboration between Nigerian stakeholders and Indian partners. Abdullahi Mustafa brings us more on this report. Kano's Akot Surgery Specialist Hospital is a prime example of Indo-Nigerian healthcare collaboration. This state-of-the-art hospital boasts cutting-edge procedures and equipment providing top-notch medical, surgical and laboratory services to Nigerians. The goal is to reduce medical tourism by bringing specialized care right to Nigerians' doorsteps. With experts in minimally invasive spine surgery, neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery, obstetrics, and gynecology on board, patients are in good hands. We know the difficulties what the indigents are having traveling abroad. We wanted to bring the medical services to the doorstep. The hospital also works towards offering multi-specialty services. We have brought home the facilities, the talents, and the capacity, and we're getting it done. So you don't have to travel outside the country to access this. Indian High Commissioner to Nigeria, who visited Kano to foster partnerships and growth, was thrilled to see the hospital's progress, calling it a testament to decades of successful collaboration between Nigeria and India. The uh, human resources that are available over here, it's a, it's a very uh, heartening thing to see that such a thing is being developed and it is uh, providing services to local community here. During a visit to the Kano government house, he told Governor Abukabir Yusuf that with multi-billion dollar investment in Nigeria, Indian companies are creating thousands of jobs and driving growth. As the Indian High Commissioner departs Kano, the city looks forward to strengthen partnerships and a brighter future. In Kano, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. Stakeholders have called for sustained public education and increased investment in cyber defense to tackle the growing menace of cyber threats. Francis Form has the reports. The week-long event aimed at raising public awareness about cyber threats and promoting safe online practices brought together industry experts, law enforcement agencies, and concerned citizens. The Nigeria Police Force National Cybercrime Center emphasized the importance of cooperation between citizens and law enforcement agencies in combating cybercrime. We are looking forward to partnering with um, most of the tech partners that uh, attended this event in particular. And of course, if there, if there are issues, if anyone is um, involved in, um, is affected by cyber, cyber attacks, should equally reach out to us for, for help. Cyber Crime Center is actively supporting us in addressing these issues. In fact, you know, security agencies, they don't talk, but they have 
done a great deal this year. What they have done, you know, if only they could really put out the true figure there, you'd be very, very impressed. With. In Nigeria, I have seen uh, a commitment from uh, uh, different stakeholders in the way they, uh, uh, they are ready or their readiness to combat cybercrime. Cybercrime is an evolving threat that demands both individual responsibility and collective effort. Through awareness, the police say it aims to protect digital infrastructure and safeguard citizens from falling prey to online attacks. Francis from NTA News. Technology is not just a tool, but also a catalyst for driving transformation and how government delivers on its campaign promises as it seeks ways to modernize operations, streamline processes, and create more transparent and efficient public service. This was contained in the message of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. To the opening of this year's Nigeria GovTech Conference with the theme, Digital Innovation as a Catalyst for the Renewed Hope Agenda, Haman Jabani reports. The conference put together by the Bureau of Public Service Reforms is aimed at bringing together government representatives at all levels alongside key players in the technology industry to discuss and identify ways in which new and emerging trends in tech can be leveraged to transform public service delivery and enhance the overall progress of the country. Our focus remains on consolidating these achievements and addressing the challenges that may hinder the full adoption of GovTech solutions in our public sector. We are the digital innovation. So it's not a mission that I'm here standing in front of you, both my brothers, elders, and all of us, to tell you that this is a team, a better team, for a proper time in this country. The forum also provided a strategic platform for engagement, collaboration, and deliberation on harnessing technology to transform governance and service delivery across the country. Let us explore how digital solutions can facilitate cross-sector collaboration that break down traditional barriers and promote knowledge sharing. Stakeholders at the conference are drawn from a diverse ecosystem of tech giants, public and private sectors, interest groups, development partners, the media, state and local government officials. Haman Jabani, NTA News. Stay with the NTA as we go for another break. <laughs> the Northeast Development Commission, NEDC, has initiated discussions with transport unions, including the National Association of Road Transport Owners and the National Union of Road Transport Workers to collaborate on the introduction of e-mobility purposes in the Northeast Zone. This followed President Bonat Tinubu's approval for the commission to deploy electric vehicles in the Northeast to ease mobility and reduce transportation costs across the states in the region. Umar Jimbarima reports. The e-mobility project plans to introduce tricycles, taxis and buses powered by electric technologies designed for both interstate and interstate travel moving away from gas and petrol fueled vehicles. The shift will not only lower the cost of transportation but also contribute to environmental sustainability, reducing emissions and sparking rapid development in the Northeast. NEDC Managing Director Mohamed Goni Al-Kali emphasized the importance of partnership with transportation unions in the region calling on union leaders and members to support the initiative to ensure its success. Last week, Mr. President gave the approval that the Commission should deploy e-mobility in the North region. And you know, for this kind of a transaction, you have a lot of stakeholders. And we thought at the Commission that that two unions are very critical in the implementation of this uh, the e-mobility project has already been approved by President Bola Amatinubu to cushion the impact caused by the rising cost of commercial transportation in the northeast in Meduguri, Umar Jimbarima, NTA News. 
Now, Gombe State governments will commence payments of 70,000 Naira minimum wage this month in line with the approval of President Bola Ahmed Tunubu. This was announced at a media briefing shortly after the meeting of stakeholders chaired by the State Deputy Governor Manasse Daniel Jato. Zara Umar Adamu reports. A meeting of the Minimum Wage Negotiation Committee, Labor Unions and the Technical Subcommittee follows the federal government's consequential adjustment table, which served as a working document in the implementation of the adjustment in Gombe State. The technical subcommittee led by Commissioner of Finance, Gambo Magaji, was given 72 hours to determine the amount payable to workers from October 2024. We have looked at it. We have looked at what is available, what is not available. And I can assure you that the government, the governor, is ready and is determined to pay the 70,000 minimum wage from this month. I want to inform the general civil servants of the state and the general public in at large that the first day we have the meeting, we have looked at different scenarios of tables. The ball has already been thrown into the field, and inshallah, the final day is coming. We have our make the pronouncement. And the will be. Workers in Gombe State receive 10,000 from the state government in addition to their monthly salary to cushion the economic hardship. Zara Umar Adam, NTA News. The federal government, states and corporate organizations have raised the sum of 5.7 trillion naira from the capital markets as industry players say the younger generation's participation in crypto and other digital finance will deepen investments in the capital markets. This was as the floor of the exchange in commemoration of World Investors Week in Lagos. Amaka Owo reports. That was the closing session of the week's trading by the Director General Securities and Exchange Commission in company of the leadership of the Nigerian Exchange Group and other industry players. It also heralded the International Investors Week organized by the International Organization of Securities Commission, IOSU, of which Nigeria is a signatory. We are bringing value back to this market. We are not only doing that by talking, we are implementing new regulations and we are also bringing into the space technology, which is your nest of kin. For the Nigerian Exchange Group, building wealth through investment in the capital market, opportunities for the next generation in the digital age is art. Our market needs to go away from being seen as a mono uh, asset class, equities, and being seen as a multi-asset class. We have MOUs uh, with leading exchanges in the world, London Stock Exchange, Johannesburg Stock Exchange, and most recently Nasdaq Dubai. What that does is to open up our markets so that our investors can have access to multi-asset uh, instruments they can invest in. Other stakeholders in provided insights on the risks, rewards and market volatility. Investor protection and market development remains key to regulating the capital market. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. And businessman Benny will take us through latest news in the world of business. Hello, Benny. Thank you, Lami. And uh, talking and business, clean and affordable energy is a conversation on the global stage. And for the World Trade Organization, the Trade and Environment Week serves as a unique platform for the members of to engage with business representatives, international organizations, academics, experts, civil society, in addressing trade-related environmental issues. Not designed for renewables. The market is still designed for fossil fuel. The clean energy transition is happening as we speak, and trade will play a decisive role in determining whether it's inclusive, providing energy security and access for all, and becoming an enabler of sustainable economic growth and development. Renewable energies today are the cheapest sources of energy. These natural mismatches between power supply and power demand can be partly solved by trade opportunities supported by better 
weather, water, and climate information. Any monies that are earned from any of the policies that are moving towards decarbonization by developed countries, they ought to consider how this can be channeled to help developing countries also meet those goals, the cost of capital. And talking about the energy market, the U.S. crude oil has gained second weekly gain on the, uh, on the trade, like the oil prices have gained uh, more than 10% through Thursday's close of transactions. Uh, like you see amid Iran, as uh, Iran hit Israel last week. And looking at the WTI November contract, we have a $75.31 per barrel, which is down 54 cents year today. Now the U.S. crude oil gained about 2% at the end of today's trade. Now let's take a look at uh, the, let's look at other en energy contracts, the, the next page. Now, Brent December contract is $78 to $0.91 cents per barrel, down $0.49, cents, which is also year to day, which now pegs the global benchmark, increasing to more than 2%. And from the energy market, we take a look at the capital market in Nigeria, where the bulls are now back, haven't uh, closed transactions with the all share index closing at 97,606.63% from the 97,444 at the end of Thursday's transactions. For today, we can see 0.13 appreciation, thereby increasing the market capitalization to 56 trillion naira. And taking a look at the deals at the end of transactions, we had 6,900 and 50 deals. And looking at the top trades at this point, Access Core came tops with uh, 68.2 million, followed by Fidelity Bank with 43.1 million on the second spot. And on the third spot, we have the United Bank for Africa with 25.4 million. This is good news for investors, which says the sell offs are beginning to die down. Well, this is it on business. Lamy, you can take it from here. Thank you, Benny, for the update. Now, factional interests are on the verge of collapsing the main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, as suspension and counter-suspension deepens crack at its walls. Despite efforts by Senator Adolfo Swaber, led Board of Trustees to mend fences. Now, alleged suspended acting national chairman of the party, Umar Iliada Magum, holds a strategic meeting with the party chairman of the six northeastern states. Timothy Yusuf brings us the details. First, the National Working Committee of the People's Democratic Party, arising from its 593rd meeting on Thursday, October 10, 2024, has directed the National Publicity Secretary Debo Logwagba and National Legal Advisor Kamal Dina Deemi Ajiba, the SEN, to step aside Chingwe Unorom, the National Director of Publicity of the PDP, in a statement said, the NWC has constituted a committee to be chaired by the Deputy National Chairman South, Ambassador Tofi Karakpaja, to investigate the issues raised against the officers in compliance with the provisions of the constitution of the party. He directed their respective deputies to assume office in acting capacity with effect from Friday, October 11, 2024, and in another twist, a parallel National Working Committee of the People's Democratic Party has extensively considered the series of complaints raised against the acting National Chairman Ambassador Ilya Damagum and National Secretary Senator Samuel Anyahu, particularly with regard to the letter addressed by them to the Court of Appeal against the party's position in the case involving the 27 former members of the River State House of Assembly who vacated their seats upon defecting from the PDP to the all Progressives Congress, APC. National Publicity Secretary of the party, Debo Logoagba, in a statement issued in Abuja said, the NWC condemned what he described as anti-party activity of the acting national chairman and the national secretary. Meanwhile, the acting national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Umar Iliada Magum, has held a strategic meeting with the party chairman in Bochi. PDP is a brand is the only surviving party since 1998. We have tested so many turbulences, we have come out of it strong. But it is not about our personal interests, 
It is not about our personal problems and that of any other stakeholder in Nigeria. God in the nick of time has given me and my brother the leadership of this party. And therefore I begged him on my knees that we should be able to come together and resolve all these contending issues. The meeting focused on addressing the party's internal disagreements among its members. Timothy Yusuf, NTA News. You're watching News at 9 on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We take a break now. More stories when we return. Do stay. <laughs> Thank you for staying. Concerned by the food insecurity and malnutrition in the society, especially from the northern parts of the country, the Sultan Foundation for Peace and Development, in partnership with Accelerating Nutrition Results in Nigeria, brought together female faith influencers and nutritionists for a one-day dialogue. That story will come to you subsequently in other bulletins. Now, President Bola Tinubu congratulates businesswoman Hajia Muinat Bola Shagaya as she celebrates 65th birthday. The president joins family, friends, and business associates in celebrating the founder and CEO of Bulmus Group International, whose business and philanthropic endeavors have touched the lives of many Nigerians. The president commends Haji Ashagaya's contribution to the nation's economic growth, particularly through her diverse business investments in industries such as oil, real estate, banking, and communications. Now let's go to Ayo to bring us all those interesting stories from the world of sports. Ayo, it's over to you. Thank you, Ayo. President Bola Tinubu condoles with the Group Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, Mr. Kulu Melekari, over the death of his daughter, Fatima. Kari's daughter died Friday at the age of 25 after a protracted illness. The president sympathizes with Kari and the rest of the family on the irreparable loss, which was also painful. President Tinubu prays for the repose of the soul of Fatima and urges the Kari family to stay strong at these trying times. Similarly, Deputy President of the Senate, Baro Jibrin, condoles with NNPCL's boss, Mele Kari, over the death of his daughter, Fatima. Senator Jibrin, in a statement, prayed Allah to grant her genital field dose and the family members the fortitude to bear the loss. And that brings us to the end of Network News tonight. We thank you for being there. Uh, we wish you a very good weekend.